Hello everyone. Um, welcome back. We are going to have another math day today. We're going to focus on a different type of reimbursement. Um, this one is called the DRG. Now DRG stands for Diagnosis Related Group. Y'all have to excuse me today and probably every lecture hereafter. I have rolled around apparently in some poison ivy and I am an itchy mess. So if you see me scratching, just ignore me because Lord knows it has been the most miserable experience in my life. I mean, I don't remember pregnancy being this hard. It's been a mess. Anywho, so I'm going to sit here and I'm going to scratch in the privacy of my dining room and talk to you guys about the DRG or the Diagnosis Related Group. Now, um, there are some things that we need to point out about um, this before we go forward. Um, the DRG um, scratch paper that we're going to use today that always include for you will be attached to Blackboard along with the problem that we worked today. We will also have um, attached to Blackboard and this is very important that you get this what's called the DRG schedule. You're going to need the DRG schedule when working your problems and I'm fixing to show you why. So it's a good idea that you pause this video and go ahead and get into Blackboard and open up those attachments so you can work along with me. Again, you will need the DRG schedule and it would probably help to have um, the scratch paper that I am going to work the sample problem on handy as well. Alright, the DRG, again, it stands for Diagnosis Related Group. Again, like we've said before, and I'm going to try to bring this up for you to see, um, we are dealing with the same formula. Total charges minus contractual adjustment equals allowable minus your deductible equals the subtotal minus coinsurance equals estimated insurance payment. We're going to be using that same exact formula today for the DRG. Like I told you in the beginning, it's not that the formula changes. What does change is the formula that we use to calculate the allowable. And I've written down over on this side, right over here, that the allowable multiplied by the relative, the allowable is going to be equal to the relative weight times the base payment rate. Okay, and I know y'all don't know what those are yet, but you want to jot that down. This is really simple, and once you know how to get the information. Allowable is going to be equal to relative weight times base payment rate. And I'm going to show you how to work these problems. Again, a relatively simple form of math because we know this formula. The, I'm having trouble with this today. This formula here, the total charges minus contractual adjustment, blah, blah, blah. But we're swapping up how we calculate the allowable, which that allowable again is going to be allowable equals relative weight times base payment rate. So if you open up your um, attachments in Blackboard, okay, I want you to pull up that DRG schedule. Let's kind of look at this and see what it means just looking at it, you can tell a lot from it. Alrighty, you see it says DRGV22. Okay, that, and then there's in that column, in that first column, there's numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, blah, 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 blah. Okay, those numbers are your DRG numbers. Now, these numbers would do appear on an insurance claim and indicate reimbursement. Okay. Then you see MDC, which is Major Diagnostic Category. The book talks about that term a little bit, but we're not really going to study it too hard. And then we have Type, which is either Surgical or Medical. Okay, Again, that's not going to affect us much on our math. The next column says DRG Title. Now, this is a brief description of the diagnosis slash procedures that were done. Okay, Then we have a column that says Relative Weight. If you look at the relative weight column, you see it's got a number. The first one being 3.3344. 
the next one being 1.9467. Do you see that? Okay, those weights, and again, the title of that relative weight kind of tells you what they're doing. When something is means it's relative, it means that we're comparing. Okay, so relatively speaking, the weight tells us or indicates severity. All right, the more, the higher the relative weight, the more severe the diagnosis. For example, if you look at the number one DRG, the craniotomy is greater than 17 with complications. Okay, let's think about what a craniotomy is. What's a craniotomy? They're cutting into your head. Okay, they're in your cranium, your skull. Not good. Okay, if you look at the relative weight of that one, it's 3.3344. All right. If you look down a little bit further, let's say DRG number six, it says carpal tunnel release. Okay, what's carpal tunnel? It's that complication in your wrist when you do a lot of repetitive motion. Now, if you look over at the relative weight of carpal tunnel release, you see a weight of 0 0.7850. Now, using common sense, again, this is not mystical clinical stuff, which one is more severe? Messing with your wrist or getting your skull drilled into? You know, we would assume that the craniotomy is far more severe. And if you look at the weights, it's got a much higher relative weight than the carpal tunnel release does. So that means that, yes, comparatively speaking, the craniotomy is far more um, complicated and severe, and that is um, that is um, shown through its relative weight. So if you scroll down, and I'm going to do this with you, if you scroll down through your DRG schedule, you'll notice there's all kinds of stuff, all kinds of DRGs. In fact, there are 543 DRGs listed on this schedule. Each one of them has a relative weight. For example, um, go to DRG 487. It says other multiple significant trauma and there's 1.9715. Okay, make sure, especially if you print this out, I'm just looking at it from the computer which actually makes it a little easier. If you print this thing out, make sure when you're reading you know, across the table, make sure that you are reading in a straight line. If you need to, get a straight edge and put on that. I recommend that you just use it on the computer because it being 500 and some odd um, DRGs listed on here, it's probably going to be a pretty big file to print. But again, that's completely up to you. Okay, so the relative weight that we're talking about in our allowable equals relative weight times base payment rate that relative weight is going to come from this DRG schedule. So you'll need to have it with you when you try to work the problems. Now, again, it's relative weight times base payment rate. The base payment rate is going to be found in your contract language. Okay, the problem that I give you will have that information in it for you to reference. Okay. So we're going to take the relative weight times the base payment rate and we're going to plug the answer to that problem into the allowable spot in our formula. Alright, the rest we've been dealing with. So hopefully you're starting to get a feel for plugging in total charges, um, for deductibles and coinsurance and stuff like that. Okay, it also needs to be stated that these um, DRGs are based solely on diagnosis code. Now this is where your coding, because we always talk about how coding kind of affected everything, this is one of the ways where coding really affects your reimbursement because the diagnosis code chosen for the principal diagnosis, and you guys know, I hope, that the principal diagnosis is the one that is after study, the main reason you were here today, this, the, the diagnosis code that is assigned in that principal slot is going to affect what you get paid because that diagnosis code is going to lead to 
your DRG assignment. So you really, this is very much where the coding and the reimbursement affect one another. And if you don't code correctly, it could actually lead to um, incorrect reimbursement. You might be walking away from reimbursement that you could have had had you used a different diagnosis code. So this is where that coding piece plays into reimbursement. Now, if you look in your textbook on page 131, there's actually, and I'll see if I can bring this out here, this weird little decision tree thing, okay? If we assign DRGs manually by hand, this is kind of the thought process or the logic that's involved in selecting a DRG. Every chapter from um, your diagnosis coding has one of these and you have to ask yourself some really significant questions as to whether and to help you um, select the DRG code. Now thankfully in this technological age we have um, software programs that will help us do this without having to have a decision tree for every single type of diagnosis code. So um, we have those at our disposal typically in every healthcare facility. They will have what is called a grouper software which will, will assist them with DRG assignment. Typically with these programs you just type in the diagnosis number or diagnosis code and it kind of spits out a DRG for you because it runs it through this decision tree logic and assigns the DRG accordingly. Now, like on every one of these um, reimbursement methods, I want to give you a couple of little facts. DRGs are used for inpatient reimbursement, inpatient reimbursement, and they are considered episode of care. Now remember, by episode of care, we mean that everything is paid according to episode, meaning we are getting a flat rate of reimbursement for that particular episode of care. Now in this case the episode, you know, with per diem we said the episode was per day because we were getting a flat rate per day. In this episode we're actually looking at an admit date to a discharge date. Okay, that time period of admit to discharge is actually what our episode is going to consist of here. Because whatever they do to you during a hospital stay it's all going to boil down to the diagnosis for that entire stay that you were in there. Okay, so the entire stay is um, it is considered because it's going to determine your diagnosis code. But at the end of the day, it is the DRG which is going to determine your relative weight, which will in turn determine your reimbursement. So let's look at how this is done. Maybe it'll make a little bit more sense once we've done a problem. But I do want you to know that DRG is an inpatient reimbursement and it is considered episode of care. Okay. Let me pull that bad boy up and see if we can work through it. Again, attached in Blackboard, you will find this sample problem. And I wish you would go ahead and pull this up at least where you can read through it with me um, during the course of the video. All right, Joe is admitted to Dream Memorial Hospital for inpatient services. Joe has Blue Cross Blue Shield and he has a $2,500 deductible. And after he is, his deductible is satisfied, he is responsible for 10%. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> according to the contract with Dream Memorial Blue Cross Blue Shield, inpatient services will be paid according to a DRG schedule. The DRG bill is 84 with the base payment rate of $6,000. Total charges billed are $17,7500. Now with these problems I like to again start with what I know. And what I do know here is that we have total charges of $17,750. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write that number into my total charges spot in my formula. Alrighty, we don't have the allowable or the contractual adjustment, but we do have the information available to us to find out that allowable amount. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my DRG schedule 
it tells us that we build DRG 84. Now let me scroll through my DRG schedule and find DRG 84. And I found it. It says major chest trauma without complication. And our relative weight on this one is 0.5539. 0.5539 and we need to multiply that number by our base payment rate. Now the problem, if you read the problem, it says um, BRG billed is 84 with a base payment rate of $6,000. So we're going to take that 0.5539 and we're going to multiply it by $6,000. Alrighty, I'm going to do that math on my calculator. And I get an allowable of $3,323.40. Check your math because, especially when we start working with these decimals, sometimes it's easy to get a little messed up. So, I got $3,323.40. And so I am plugging that into my allowable spot. Now, again, we know that if we have the allowable and the contractual adjust, I'm um, excuse me, the allowable and the total charges, we can calculate contractual adjustment. So I'm going to subtract 17,750, and I'm going, I'm going to take the 17,750. 17, excuse me. And I'm going to subtract from that the allowable of $3,323.40. And that gives me a contractual adjustment of $14,426.60. I'm going to check that math just to make sure. Yes. Okay. So now we have our allowable. The next step that we need to consider, again, working down your formula, uh, we need to consider next our deductible. Now the problem does tell us that Joe has Blue Cross Blue Shield and he has a $2,500 deductible. It doesn't say he's met any of it, so we make an assumption that he still has the $2,500 deductible to meet. So I'm going to subtract the $2,500 deductible and I get eight hundred and twenty three dollars and forty cents as my subtotal. The next thing to consider is his coinsurance. The problem does state that he has a ten percent coinsurance. So ten percent of what? Ten percent of the subtotal. So I'm going to take ten percent of the subtotal did that on my calculator. I got eighty-two dollars and thirty-four cents. And again, working this out on my scratch paper, you can see how we've gone from total charges, there's a contractual adjustment, our allowable, our deductible, our subtotal, there's my ten percent of subtotal is coinsurance. Now we're going to do that subtraction, eight twenty-three forty minus 8234 I got 74106 as my estimated insurance payment now I, I understand just going through the motions of this but I want you to understand what this means and you know while this is an exaggerated example because I made it up it does prove a point that is not it's it's not reality but it's not just way far out of reality that compared to what I've seen you know we have we've started out with total charges of seventeen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars now most people think that the doctor um, that the hospital is actually going to get seventeen thousand seven hundred fifty dollars out of this but that is not true it's situations like this because especially Medicare Medicare uses a DRG reimbursement and Medicare lowballs, for lack of a better term, the hospital a lot of times as far as how much they're getting paid. So 
the hospital everybody thinks hospitals are rolling in money they have to be because they have all these outrageous charges but what I hope you're saying here is that like in this case it doesn't matter what we charge the insurance is going to pay a flat rate according to contract in this case the flat rate was horrible all that was allowed and remember allowable is what insurance is going to pay maximum the maximum allowable here was only thirty three hundred some odd dollars then when you factor in the fact that twenty five hundred dollars has to come from the patient and then eighty two thirty four has to come from the patient then we're really looking at only seven hundred and forty one dollars and six cents is coming from the insurance company now this is something that's important to note because <coughs> excuse me you know insurance companies are going to be your fastest money that you receive in a hospital okay you file a clean claim bam we hope you know on average we get paid in 45 to 50 days and that's average across all payers but in this situation you know we've got the bulk of the bill coming from the patient I'm not knocking patients because I'm a patient but I also know how patients pay hospital bills I know because I do it myself if I have a bill at the hospital or the dentist or anything like that I pay it when I get to it it's not any it's not more important than my light bill it's not more important than my car note or my house note I pay doctor bills when I might have a little bit of extra money here and there and that's when I pay my doctor I get around to paying them or the hospital or like said the dentist anybody I get around to paying them when I got the money which is rare and unfortunately that is the mindset of the patients for the most part some patients might come in and pay their whole bill but they got more money than most of us you know if I had to come up with this kind of patient liability in this problem it was total twenty five hundred and eighty two dollars and thirty four cents oh lord I'd be waiting a long time to get that procedure done or I'd owe them a bill forever because I'd have to be set up like on a payment plan or something like that so this is why so many hospitals find themselves in some sort of financial distress because the insurance company is not allowing a whole lot compared to their total charges I mean you'll notice got fourteen thousand dollars of this was that contractual adjustment which like I told you before is a non cash adjustment nobody's getting any money for that okay but we also have to consider that the money that should come in on this bill okay the three thousand three hundred twenty three dollars and forty cents which was our maximum allowed most of that is actually coming from the patient and that's not a good thing for the hospital okay because patients kind of pay on their own time and how it's convenient for them <coughs> so I hope that is something that you've been able to deduce from looking at some of these math problems contracts are great because it does bring in the market for the patient you know for the patient to come to that facility again it becoming a preferred facility because it's now a network however the downside of that is you're kind of at their mercy and when you're dealing with big wigs like Medicare and Blue Cross Blue Shield this is not a good thing for most hospitals on average from what I've seen and again I've been to several different hospitals in this region most um, hospitals in Southeast Arkansas might get 50 percent of total charges from Medicare on average okay um, most hospitals will probably get 40 to 50 percent from Blue Cross Blue Shield so even though we might have some volume of business you got to understand that with the majority of our patients in this area being Medicare and Medicaid there's not going to be a whole lot of money because these are social government these are those um, programs administered by the federal government that are qualified for without paying well and there are some premiums that are paid but for the most part largely in this area not paying any premiums so the reimbursement levels are going to be low compared to the total charges so just because you know you can look at an accounts receivable report and say oh we've got four million dollars on the books for you know from insurance insurance companies all together owe us four million dollars you know in reality that you're not going to get that whole four million dollars that you're probably going to get more in reality like two million dollars and then you got to consider some patient liability in that and before you know it what insurance is ex actually expected to pay you is quite um, quite low quite horrible um, for the healthcare facility so um, that's pretty much all on the DRG
Again, remembering that um, the DRG is based on principal diagnosis, that um, it's our relative weight times the base payment rate that calculates our allowable. The rest you just plug into the formula like we've been doing. <coughs> I want to point out something. Make sure on your um, answers when I ask for total patient liability. Remember, total patient liability incorporates two components. Those two components are deductible and coinsurance. So make sure you add those two together so that um, you can give me that total patient liability. Alrighty, that's all for our DRG section today. Again, please remember to pull these handouts off of Blackboard and look over them and make sure you work your problems. Again, that's the only feedback that I'm getting from you as far as whether or not you're understanding. As always, if you have questions, please give me a call. Uh, my phone number's in the syllabus and we'll try to work together to fix any problems that you're having. Have a good day.